which hopefully yes. will be up. Oh, here we go. We are live. I'm going to begin the recording. Computer recordings underway. Cloud is rolling. Okay. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video? Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Good morning. Uh, I'm Councilmember Francisco Moya, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm joined remotely uh, today by Council Members Borelli, Barry G, Ayala, Rivera, Levin, Reynoso, uh, and Council Members Menchaca and Van Bramer. Uh, today we will vote on items heard by the subcommittee at our meeting of February 23rd and March 4th. First, I would like to uh, note that the pre-considered LUs 738, 739, and 740 listed on today's agenda for the uh, Arbor East proposal are being laid over. Uh, we will begin with a vote to approve with modifications uh, pre-considered LU numbers uh, 733, 734, and the 737 Fourth Avenue rezoning relating uh, to property in Council Member Menchaca's district in Brooklyn. The proposal seeks a zoning map amendment to change an existing M11D district to an R8A C24 district and related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one and option two. Together, these actions would facilitate the development of a new 14-story mixed-use building with approximately 142 dwelling units, up to 35 of which would be affordable, as well as ground floor commercial use and 52 below-grade accessory parking spaces. Uh, our modification will be to strike option two while retaining option one. Council Member Menchaca is in support of the proposal as modified. Uh, we are also voting to approve pre-considered LUs, uh, pre considered LUs for the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning under ULIP numbers C200243 ZMQ and N200244 ZMQ. Relating to property in Council Member Van Bramer's district in Queens, the application as proposed seeks a zoning map amendment to change the existing M11 district to an R6A district and related zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary uh, utilize, uh, mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one. The proposed action would facilitate a new mixed-use development with a 100% affordable uh, housing component, including approximately 167 dwelling units, as well as ground floor office space for community facility use and approximately 170 parking spaces. Council Member Van Bramer is in support of the proposal. We will also uh, vote to approve pre-considered LUs for the uh, 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning under ULIP numbers C210103 ZMX and N210104 ZRX relating to property in Council Member Gibson's district in the Bronx. The application seeks a zoning map amendment to to rezone an M11 district to an R7X C24 district and a related zoning uh, text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area utilizing option one. Together, these actions would facilitate the development of two new mixed-use buildings with a 100% affordable housing component, including approximately 238 dwelling units, as well as ground floor commercial use and approximately 73 uh, below grade accessory parking spaces. Council member Gibson is in support of the proposal. Um, and now uh, I would like to take the opportunity to turn it over to um, council member Menchaca and then council member Van Bramer uh, for some uh, brief remarks. Thank you, chair. And uh, thank you to all my colleagues on this committee. Today, I'm announcing my support for the 737 Fourth Avenue rezoning proposal. The proposal is not perfect. It will not, for instance, <clears throat> build 100% affordable, which I believe we need to do here in the city of New York. But it does represent the clearest example of yet, one of the only things that will break and reverse the cycles of displacement and gentrification forever, community-driven and accountable development. Seven years ago, when I was first elected to the city council, I promised that I would use my power to enact the community's will. 
and I have upheld that promise from the South Brooklyn Marine Terminal to the BQX to the Industry City. I have opposed development projects that lack any means of community control, enforcement, or accountability. This project is different. From the beginning, the community board, which is the most democratic and participatory forum that we have in our neighborhood, took control of this rezoning proposal. It invited the developer to follow the community's lead, held multiple hearings open to all to decide whether or how to support the project and democratically voted to approve the project with conditions. Over time and critical engagement, the developer agreed to meet all the board's conditions and then it codified them in a binding contract known as a community benefits agreement. When the city, or actually when Sunset Park community was considering Industry City, that rezoning proposal, I outlined a similar framework that required a community led process and enforcement mechanism. I opposed Industry City because none of those things happened. The community board was left divided on this proposal, meaning that there was no clear mandate for Industry City from the community. I understand why the community board has approved this project at 737 Fourth Avenue. The CBA requires the developer to build 33 permanently affordable housing units, reserve a third of its commercial space for local businesses, hire majority local or union workers for all the construction and permanent jobs, create 150 bike stations of which a third will be reserved for delivery workers, and grants the MTA a free easement to build an ADA accessible elevator to the 25th Street R station. Not only are these things required by the CBA, but they are required regardless of who owns the land. That means that the developer cannot turn around and sell this property and thereby undo these commitments. If the community board has approved the project with no debate, no enforcement, no accountability mechanism, I would have opposed this project. Having spent my entire time in the council supporting the board, this community board to become more inclusive, empowering voices that for years were excluded and using city council funding that I allocated to aid a body of dedicated volunteers, they have become experts on the city's complex land use system. I know this board has the tools and the acumen to make informed decisions and that those decisions are made by the most representative and inclusive institution that we have in this community. I see this rezoning as an, as an example of yet another development which has come to terms with community control and accountability. And I know others will disagree. And that is why I'm calling for a discussion where all the elected officials and the community board can come together and discuss not just this project and how we approved it, but how we can bring more equitable development to our community. Uh, thank you so much. We need this open discussion um, to be happening democratically. Uh, and that's what we want, community-driven development. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Menchaca. Um, I now want to turn it over to Councilmember Van Bramer. Thank you very much, Chair, and to uh, the members of the committee. And before you today is the 5025 Barnett Avenue project. Some may remember that's roughly four years ago. A similar project came forward, but it was uh, rejected by the community board, and I could not support it. But Phipps uh, came back with a revised proposal that is now the most deeply affordable project that we've ever seen in my district as a council member. And it is approved by the community board and one that I support. And here's why I ask for your support as well. The project four years ago uh, did not have any labor agreements. And as you may remember from the hearing, 32 BJS testified in favor of this project. Uh, and we have a promise and a commitment, written commitment of good jobs, uh, good wages, uh, good benefits uh, going forward with this project and the neighboring Phipps Garden Apartments. The project four years ago, uh, in terms of contextual <laughs> building was double the height of the building across the street. Uh, Phipps has come back, it is now much more uh, contextual. The affordability was an issue for the community board and for myself four years ago. And I'm really pleased that working with community board two, which is now in favor, uh, voted in favor of this project overwhelmingly, the uh, bans are 40% of AMI, 20% uh, of the apartments are at 40% of AMI, uh, including a set aside for formerly homeless 
uh, families. And the highest band is at 80%. Uh, so this is 100% affordable housing uh, with a significant chunk uh, at the 40 and 50%. Uh, the highest band at 80 percent uh, it is deeply affordable it's also worth noting that this uh, project is not displacing anyone is being built on a surface parking lot uh, and uh, those of us who uh, say we want and need truly affordable housing have an opportunity here uh, to actually build that truly affordable housing so i am in full support of this we have work to do of course with uh, FIPS uh, with respect to the FIPS garden apartments across the street and some of the existing uh, issues with the tenant association, but uh, with community board to uh, working with us, there is an improvement plan that FIPS has agreed to. Uh, they have been working uh, towards that and fulfilling uh, those pledges in the improvement plan. And there are now ongoing meetings with the tenant association and FIPS which uh, is what we must need, we must have in order to keep and hold FIPS accountable. But uh, this is a far different and much improved project and one that is worthy of our support uh, and will represent real, deep, true affordable housing in a Sunnyside neighborhood that desperately needs it. So thank you very much, Chair. Th thank you, Councilman Van, um, Van Bramer. Uh, I now call for a vote. Uh, to approve uh, the pre-considered LUs relating to the 50-25 Barnett Avenue rezoning and pre-considered LUs relating to the 1099 Webster Avenue rezoning and to approve with the modification uh, I have described in LUs 733, 734, and 737 Fourth Avenue rezoning. Uh, Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. I vote aye on all. Council Member Levin. Aye on all. Councilmember Reynoso. Councilmember Reynoso. I vote, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Councilmember Gordenchik. Aye on all. Councilmember Ayala. Council member Rivera. Aye. Council member Borelli. Aye. Uh, by a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the items are approved and uh, recommended to the full land use committee. Uh, that uh, thank you, Arthur. That concludes uh, today's business. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, the subcommittee council, land use, and other council staff, and the sergeant at arms for participating in today's meeting. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned.